Good morning, and it is Off the Press, the program where we take a look at the national dailies and try to make sense of it as much as time would allow. We'll look at the headlines and have a conversation. And with me to do so this morning is public affairs analyst, uh, Leonard Ebute. Good to still have you in the studio with me. Thank you, Amaka. All to right. Be here. Great. Uh, so we would be looking at uh, different newspapers this morning, uh, but we'll begin with the Punch newspaper already displayed. And it says, a federal government will offer more oil fields for licensing. That's according to NNPC. The story is on page 20. And budget federal government slashes oil benchmark further to $20 per barrel. That story is on page 10. Buhari Jonathan. Buhari Jonathan remember late ex-president Eradua. That story is on page 16. And Malami knocked for calling Abacha's loot ex-dictator's assets on page 9. The big story for the Punch newspaper, COVID-19, Lagos battles shortage of regions, FCT test kits running out. That story is on page two there. And at the top, you can see the global the figures for COVID-19. Nigeria now stands at 2,950 confirmed cases, uh, 481 thankfully recovered and discharged. Unfortunately, Nigeria has re recorded 98 deaths, just two short of 100. You can also see the global figures. We are now at 3.7 globally and uh, 357 deaths also. Well, we we'll go further down of the newspaper. You see merchants now treat chemical as if it's gold, says state government. Kano lacks adequate manpower for surveillance and contract tracing. We also have the IMF disburses $3.4 billion uh, loan to Nigeria. Uh, government to cut budget 2020 oil benchmark to $20 per barrel. Economy to contract by 3.4%. That story is in front. Uh, Buhari Jonathan and others, President Eradua was transparent. That story is on page six. Now Lagos gets a 2.5 million naira ambulance. Ogun patient dies inside car. Unfortunately, Niger banks resist on social, insist rather on social distance. Daura Emir's palace shot. Now, NCDC driver test positive. Unfortunately, 60% IDP kids vulnerable to the virus. Delta patients arrested in Enugu. Uh, 70 charged with violation in Rivers. 18 Almajere sneak into Ondo. Lagos discharges 60 patients. Yobe lawmaker refuses isolation. These are more you find on pages 4, 6, and 28 of the newspaper, the Punch, New the Nation newspaper, rather, which is. The Punch newspaper. Now we'll go to the Nation newspaper. It says, NDDC's IMC on the probe, over 40 billion naira. That story is on page 8. Cash spent in three months. We also have 265 stranded Nigerians to return today from UAE. That's according to the Foreign Affairs Minister, Geoffrey Onyema there. Reps speak U10 on infectious disease bill. Uh, bill lands in Senate on page 26 of the Nation newspaper. The big story, 34 more doctors positive. Nigeria won't rule out local herbs for coronavirus treatment, says Minister. Again, the global figures stands at 3.7 uh, and Nigeria stands at 3. Uh, 2,558, 2, as you can see, 87 deaths, unfortunately, about over 400 discovered. As of today, new cases, 179. Now, let me begin the conversation. Uh, you've seen the two newspaper. I'm wondering which subject matter is catching your attention. There are a lot of them there. I'm sure yeah, they will display them again I, I for enjoyed reminder. The, um, the knock that Malami is getting. Um, oh, for, for those utterances. I mean, for the chief law enforcement officer of the state, the chief prosecutor of the nation, that was, it, it can't be a mistake. Mm. My understanding of that utterance, on, it's on his Twitter handle, it's one thing to say. If you're talking, you can accidentally say things. But when you're writing, particularly on Twitter, where you have word limitations, mm -hmm. you're it's usually very deliberate, deliberate about the things you put there. It is, for me, an attempt to obfuscate the reality of Abacha's thievery or to trivialize it. It is not an allegation that Abacha stole money anymore. Mm -hmm. There's evidence of it. It's coming back to us. And that's why it's a loot. It's a loot. And so for the chief prosecutor of the nation to call it Abacha asset, is, is, um, it's, it's a play mm. that Nigerians ought to keep that going and, and frustrate them, uh, frustrate 
um, any such attempts in the future. Mm -hmm. I also... Um, they will put up the paper. The paper will come up. Okay, okay. great, great, mm -hmm. great. But you can go so, ahead. So I also particularly found uh, interesting the news um, coming from Lagos State mm -hmm. around um, Lagos State running out of reagents. Yeah, Lagos battle shortage of yeah. reagents and FCT test kits. Now that's, that's, that's really critical because Lagos is the gold star, is the epicenter of the pandemic in Nigeria. Right. And Lagos seemed to be better prepared for testing, management, and all that. So all of the research data, all of the best data on COVID-19 in Nigeria would be coming from Lagos. That's correct. And so when we're running out of reagents like this, it then means that we'll be having cases that haven't been verified and all that. Mm. And I think it's a, it's a sad turn of events. Mm -hmm. um, this is what we should be asking for help for. Um, Ghana is testing. Ghana should be over 100,000 tests done now. Mm -hmm. We have done yeah, over only a fraction of that and we are out of reagents place like Lagos, it then begs the question, um, with all of the months we had before it got here, what were we doing? What were we doing? Hmm. Very, very uh, crucial question there. Hmm. Now, okay, let's take a look at, Kano says it lacks adequate manpower for surveillance and contact tracing. What's your thoughts generally on what is going on even in Kano State at Ka the moment? Kano right now is, um, is some kind of theater of the absurd, like uh, Wale Shoenka would put it. Mm. The, the, this, the landscape in Kano is dubiously scary. It's sad to put those, those two words together, mm -hmm. but Kano is such a large state by landmass, probably 12 times, 13 times the landmass of Lagos. And then it's such a highly populated state. You're right about that. And it also is notoriously poor. And, well, are you and, sure uh, Kano is notoriously poor? Yes, there is no place in the north. The, the richest part of the north has at least 75% of their population below poverty line. So the relatively rich states or relatively not so poor states don't compare at all. If so it's take, against that backdrop uh, that again, you make yeah, that statement. Yeah, so when, when you have 25, 23, 25 million people, and we can say with clarity that at least 15 million of them are poor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a poor state. When you obfuscate that reality in doing your per capita GDP, and it shows some figure that looks like it is comparing, it's still the, it's still the, 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 the error of averages, where the super rich, somebody earns 100 naira, another person earns one naira, the average comes to 45.5 naira, it doesn't show. Mm -hmm. So this is the reality of Kano. So you cannot enforce a lockdown when there is hunger. You cannot enforce a lockdown when the logic for the lockdown cannot be understood by the people. Right. So when you add poverty to a low level of literacy level, again, compared to this side of town, uh, you have a nightmare waiting to happen. Mm. And the entire handling of the flow so far has been, has been funny. Um, Kanu is a prayer. Mm. Yeah. There is point. absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing that the government of Kano can do about Kano State right now. Something Even for Lagos, we can say we haven't, we are, we are trying, but they, if you went to Mushin, if you lived in Olowora or Yajangbadi or, you know, the suburbs of Lagos, mm -hmm. there was no lockdown. Those people live from hand to mouth. So it is what the work they do today that fits them tomorrow. So they are going to work. There's a lot of commercial activities, trading activities happening among them. So we just have to change the strategy. You know, we, we, this whole lockdown, contact trace, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It can't work for certain parts of Nigeria. It's clear. Even the WHO has recommended a different strategy for poor African nations mm -hmm. to look at communal lockdown, to mm -hmm. look at, you know. So, uh, Kano. Right. It's unfortunate. Is a prayer. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you know, uh, they will, I'm, I'm sure they'll put that up. Uh, but we'll move on to the Guardian newspaper. But it was a nation newspaper that mentioned also um, talking about the amount of doctors, the number of doctors that have been infected mm -hmm. during this outbreak of COVID 19. Uh, I mean, 
as Nigerians, we, we, we know that they are the ones, the front, they are in the front lines, you know, of course, and many others who make it happen, make life easy this time. But are we in a good place when our doctors, you know, 34 more doctors test positive, when we begin to have those who are supposed to be in charge of taking care of the rest of us already at risk? I mean, how do we move from here? Yeah, so I think we have even been very lucky with the number of sick doctors, quite frankly. Uh, it's either that Nigerian doctors have been exceptional in managing what PPEs they have, mm. because when you look at the state of the isolation centers in some of the states outside of Lagos, it's um, not an isolation center in the sense of it. And so when you have doctors working under those kinds of conditions, where people are running away from their isolation centers. Mm -hmm. I imagine they had a fight with some people before they ran away and all of that. It's a miracle that the numbers are still within manageable limits. Mm. It's also a miracle that the mortality rate in Nigeria has trended around the global average for mm. confirmed cases, death and mortality over total confirmed cases. Mm. We're still around that two, two and a half percent, you know, under three percent mark globally, trending even better than some of the advanced countries. countries. So um, I can't, we can't complain, but it's the reality of the profession mm. that if you are at the front line, no matter the, um, no matter how prepared you are, you are the first line of contact. Mm. When the, this guy is coming to complain about the headache, you probably didn't know he had corona, you were treating him for malaria. And most people are not also and, revealing their uh, travel history uh, uh, and all the details. And these days, it's moved away from travel history. Right, local, local infection have, now yeah, is a lot, it's a lot higher. Mm. So it's sad, but I think doctors expect this kind of exposure and they do their bit. This is why you cannot pay them enough for the work they do. I agree. They're like, like soldiers. You mm. can't pay a soldier enough for the work of putting his own life on the line for you to have a life. Mm. Right. We can't thank our doctors enough and all those who are in the front lines during this time. We really salute them. We will move on now to the Guardian newspaper. And it says, um, the big story for Guardian is Senate dares critics considers health bill uh, Bajabi Amila fought openness and proposed law. Stop on popular legislation. CNPP wants National Assembly urges lawmakers to present themselves as guinea pigs. Uh, and to the top there, Senate urged suspension of 5G network deployment in Nigeria. You find that story inside the Guardian newspaper. And Presidential Task Force denies linking Kano mass deaths to COVID-19. Really? Now, northern leaders urge the federal government to stop relocation of al uh, COVID-19 patients leave Gombe Isolation Center in protest. There are so many worrying situations here. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, please go ahead. And it goes to what I was saying mm -hmm. earlier. You, you can't, I was watching the video from Gombe and the lady in the isolation center was saying, even to buy paracetamol, they buy themselves. Hmm. in the isolation center. So it begs the question, the 27 billion that has been collected from private sectors. They were not supposed sectors. to be paying for anything. Exactly. Right. These guys buy their drugs. Yeah. And she said, she made, she made a profound statement that she's yet to see anybody in that isolation center that was actually ill. And so, and I, I mean, I saw the video, nobody looked ill there. They had the energy to protest with vigor and rigor and everything, and they were all standing up. And so I then asked the question, um, why, why are they here? Why shouldn't, if they are this healthy, even if they've been uh, diagnosed, mm -hmm. maybe they should do what happens in America, in Europe, where if you're not displaying symptoms, yeah, you self-isolate in your house. Mm -hmm. that, that will save the government cost. It will save all of this embarrassment because now the international community is looking at all the monies coming into Nigeria and I'm asking wondering. the question. Private sector has 27 billion in stock that could have taken care of the few manageable people in Gombe and all that. So it's, um, even though they're, they're telling us they are going to you know, be transparent around, at what point? Mm -hmm. This is the point people need to see what that money is being used for. Right. It has to finish early. Then come and tell us it's finished. And then we'll, you, can, you can show us exactly what was done with the money. Mm -hmm. But if while you have the money in Nigerian parlance, as it is hot, mm -hmm. 
people that are supposed to be beneficiaries of this money are having to leave isolation centers in protest. That's a sad development and it's really, really shameful. All right. Let's take a look at, uh, on the conversation on importation of al -Majire. You know, uh, northern leaders are asking that they stop moving this al as we we'll say now in English, the plural will be al but in Hausa it will be al moving them from one state to another state. Um, is it the best option to leave them wherever they are and probably begin the testing there and, you know, find what to do with them, as opposed to moving them from, you know, one state to another state where they can potentially, of course, transmit the disease to uh, others? <coughs> you see, it, it's sad when a situation where not a few northern elites, beginning from the, the great um, Aminu Kano, started talking about the, this, this cultural change. Hmm. The, the whole al -Majri, the al they are, they are supposed to be disciples of the Islamic faith. That's, that's, the, right. that's the whole point of it. The Hausa meaning for al is disciple, that's follower, correct. and so on. And so, but they are essentially now beggars. Islam was imported into Nigeria from Saudi Arabia. They don't have, have al Majiris in Saudi Arabia. Uh -huh. They don't have in Iran. And these are the epicenter of the Islamic religion. They don't have those. So you, 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 you create an existing sociocultural situation, sprinkle it with religion, and garnish it with a, 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 a context that provides for the malams that take care of those children. As far as I'm concerned, it is a, it is, it is a form hmm. of slavery, right? But away from that, and it's, it's a religious thing, I, I know people are going to come at me and all that, I don't care. They are Nigerians. They are not living like Nigerians should live. They don't meet the basic standards of the fundamental rights of a child mm -hmm. in terms of the, and that's fact. If you don't like it, it's your business. But now that problem has been here for a long time. Now health has come in. They live under conditions where if there's COVID, it's going to go around. That's right. It's not just going to go around among themselves. It's going to go around among the people because they mandatorily go out to beg for food on a daily basis, food and arms. Mm. Much more in the month of Ramadan, where the average Muslim is more generous with receiving the poor mm -hmm. and, and all of that. Given. So how do we deal with it? My idea is to localize them where they are, suspend the arms, the, the, the request for arms and whatever, house them in makeshift quarters. Maybe school schools are, are not functioning now. Mm -hmm. Put them in school environment. The, the money we are supposed to use for school feeding, children are not in school. Feed them for the period. Do the testing on site, right? quarantine them communally on site and generally manage them as a group. Right. Otherwise, if you are cross-transmitting, then it's, uh, wow. it's, it's an overextension of an already it's, bad situation. Right, it's a tough place to be in right now. Now, we'll move on to business day, uh, which is already displayed there. COVID-19 LCCI recommends one-year tax break for manufacturers, suspension of 50% that. Fantastic um, idea. Right. Let's talk about it. Yeah. I mean, see, see, so, so today, Nigeria is tagging along with the rest of the world mm -hmm. in terms of the focus on the health part of COVID-19. In Nigeria, the health part of COVID-19 is minimal. If the disease continues to grow at this rate and the whole of the nation is infected, uh, in the end, it's only about... 3% of the nation that will be infected. Mm -hmm. And out of that 3%, it is only 3% of that 3% that will, the mortality rate, the remaining 97% of the 3% will survive. Okay? So that's still far, far less than what mosquito does. Mm. It's nowhere close to Lassa fever. It's nowhere close to some of the other epidemics we have here. So the bigger impact of COVID-19 is economic. And the driver of that, when the economy begins to recover after COVID-19 is gone, what mm -hmm. we drive that recovery is no more government because this government is already over leveraged. The world is not going to, Nigeria is not going to find money to borrow from anywhere in the world except it's a social intervention fund. Mm. Reason is money for businesses. We be allocated all the way from Europe is looking for money to borrow. America is looking for money to borrow. Even the Chinese are struggling. 
I have Chinese partners that still want to focus on our country. All our investment decisions are businesses within our country, mm -hmm. at least for a while. And it makes common sense. It makes Anyways. common sense. Their economy mm -hmm. is in recovery as well. So where is Nigeria going to get money from? Superimpose that on falling oil prices. There's a bit of recovery now. Now we're calling 20 naira per barrel a recovery. Hmm. The country is already in recession. It's going to be in a recession for at least six. We are going to go into a depression. There's no stopping it. Because the essentials for rejigging the economy and getting it alive is oil, which constitutes a bigger part of government revenue, is the fact that businesses are dying in droves, not just locally, but internationally. internationally. So international trade is... It's going to go head. down. Our exports outside of oil are seasonal. It's just agricultural products. Sure. And harvesting is still, you know, two, 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 two quarters away. Mm. When you put all that together, the only way that Nigeria can get out of this is by creating jobs. So right now, in economic sense, we are in what economists call a stagflation in a recession. What that means is that uh, unemployment is going up, inflation is rising, right. and productivity is going, going down. down, negative GDP. Sad. So what we activate that is what those guys are saying. Mm -hmm. You have to give businesses incentive to hire. What does that mean? Why are we going to pay tax in a year where we are not doing business? Anything, right. So take away the tax. In fact, they should be advocating for a zero VAT as At well for this year. Mm. That's the least the government can do so that we can recruit, we can, we can activate our businesses, we can trade, our products will be cheaper, we can export to neighboring African nations and even to Europe, and that will help you jumpstart the economy because you are broke. You mm. can do it. Wow, that's a creative way to put it because you're broke. Yeah, <laughs> and I mean, you so look <laughs> inward and then grow ourselves yeah. again to begin all over. Yeah. I want to say thank you so very much, uh, Public Affairs Analyst Leonard Ebute, for being with me through the first segment and, of course, the newspaper review. And this is where we call it a wrap here on Plus TV Africa. We do this Monday to Friday. The time is 8.30 a.m. Always keep it a date here on Plus TV Africa. I am Amaka Okuin saying please stay safe out there until it's over.